it's up to Mother Nature to where the where the storm's gonna hit and to what intensity it's going to hit. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, people in Florida being urged to prepare ahead of Idalia's landfall, where hurricane warnings are now in effect. Also, a major update in one of the cases involving former President Donald Trump when he's expected to go to trial over alleged interference in the 2020 election. Jacksonville, this is not representative of Jacksonville. And, and as a matter of fact, this, this person did not live in Jacksonville. He came from a neighboring county to, uh, to, to wreak havoc in our community. And a city left reeling after a deadly racist shooting. What we know right now about that investigation and the victims in that attack. Scripps News Live begins right now. Hello and welcome to Scripps News Live. Always good to see you. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. We begin this hour with a tense situation in Chapel Hill. Students and staff at the university are on lockdown right now. The latest report, an armed and dangerous person on campus. Students have been ordered to stay indoors and away from windows. Police just releasing this image of the person of interest telling people to stay away and call 911 if they come in contact. Joining me now is Leah Salvateria, a journalism student at UNC. Leah, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, bring us up to date on what's been happening. What do you know so far? What have they been saying? So we are all currently in um, a building on campus. We've been in lockdown for, I'd say, about a little bit over over an hour now. Um, and we were first notified by an Alert Carolina um, text message, which goes out to registered students on campus. Um, in our classroom, we've been following um, through the EMS and Orange County Police um, like radio like broadcast, um, in addition to also following local news segments. Um, but a lot of the information is honestly coming from students and their experiences. There's not a lot being given to us. Um, the photo was just released and but most everything is hearsay um, and from what I understand in the initial moments of the lockdown students across campus felt like there was there was no idea um, there was not a general protocol um, so it seems like everyone's been having really different experiences in different buildings um, some people reported that professors kept lecturing um, and so I think that that what I've generally heard is people are just really bewildered and don't feel like they understand what they were supposed to do um, and what is going to come next. So you're saying there isn't really a general protocol on campus right now, but how are you learning about these alerts and these warnings? Well, Alert Carolina is a text message system. So we've received, I believe, two formal alerts on that text chain. The rest is has been through a Twitter feed where you can follow Alert Carolina. You can follow Ch UNC Chapel Hill Police and you can follow the university, but I do not believe the university thread has posted anything formally. Um, there's also like Orange County Police, um, but pretty much all of the information is just a sustained shelter in place. All right, so they're saying to shelter in place and you're getting these text messages update, updates through Alert Carolina, also on Twitter. What are they saying about the suspect in this case and what's happened? So there was a suspect apprehended um, I think about 45 minutes ago um, that fit the, the description that was sent out um, looking for an Asian male in a gray shirt. Um, there was live footage of his arrest and questioning, but he was released. Um, and then the new photo that was released is of a different individual. Um, people are attempting to match that photo to names, but nothing has been confirmed. And in the meantime, where are all of your colleagues? Where are all of the students that are in your classes? I know that you said that everybody is sheltering in place, hunkering down. Where are you guys right now? So um, I do not want to identify the building that we are in just for safety, but um, we are all, I mean, UNC is a, it's, it's a big but small campus. And so I think everyone's feeling like things, you know, when you're hearing of what's happening in buildings, like, you know, one or two buildings away. We're all on this kind of, most of us are in this quad space. It happened on, I, I believe the, it was like the south southeast corner of the quad um, by the bell tower. And so um, everyone's in different buildings. Some people, most people are in lecture halls. I mean, I've heard right now, like, which is kind of a, I guess, I kind of a humorous piece of information, but people are peeing in classrooms because nobody's able to leave. Um, 
So there's been kind of a, I know people are debating, like teachers are kind of saying it's okay to go out and go to the restroom and other students are kind of fighting amongst each other saying, don't leave, don't leave the barricade. Um, I've heard that some classrooms are fully barricaded, others are not. Um, People that are in other buildings have sought out basements where there are basements, but I don't think that there's, I think everyone's spread around. I know that there was also panic in the library specifically because there's a big atrium on the bottom floor um, where you can easily find like 150 students studying at any given time during the campus. So I'm the campus day. So I'm not really sure um, where they all are, but I think that everyone is trying to stay away from windows is the only, the only like across campus protocol that I've heard people say. All right, Leah Salvatieri is a journalism student at UNC Chapel Hill. Leah, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Our other top story right now, evacuations underway in parts of Florida as the state's west coast braces for impact from Idalia. Hurricane warnings issued along the coast. Already people in Tampa loading up their cars and trucks with sandbags in order to protect their homes. Life threatening storm surge and dangerous winds likely for the Gulf Coast. A storm surge warning in effect for areas including Tampa Bay right now and Idalia is expected to strengthen into a hurricane today. It's expected to become a major hurricane before landfall on Wednesday. Now, Tampa International Airport shutting down operations at midnight. It's expected to reopen on Thursday morning following any damage assessments. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency for 46 counties. More than 1,100 National Guard members are already mobilized and ready to respond. The governor has been urging Floridians to prepare now ahead of the storm. Uh, we'd ask all Floridians to uh, monitor the weather, monitor the updates, uh, listen to your local officials. You can go to floridadisaster.org slash get a plan if you have any questions about what you need over these next few days. But now is the time to, to, to put your plan in place. You do have time today and, and throughout most of tomorrow uh, to, to make arrangements, uh, whether it's an evacuation or whether it's other things. As we start to get into to Tuesday evening, you are going to start to see the impacts of this, and we expect a landfall uh, sometime on Wednesday. Now, evacuations are already in place in parts of Manatee and Pasco counties, while north of Tampa in Hernando County, evacuations there will go into effect on Tuesday morning. Dr. Jill Trepanier is an assistant professor in the Geography and Anthropology Department at Louisiana State University. Her research includes tropical cyclones. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for your time today. So we know that Adalia at this point is a tropical storm, but the forecasts are predicting that it could be a powerful Category 3 hurricane when it hits Florida. Um, give us an update here. Why are meteorologists saying that the storm is going to intensify so much? There are a few things that can make a hurricane go from a baby tropical storm to a, a raging category three. And one of them is extremely warm ocean water. And there is no lack of ocean uh, heat in the Gulf of Mexico right now. The eastern edge of the Gulf is extremely warm. So as that storm passes over that really warm water, it will have plenty of fuel to intensify. Uh, but there are other things that can minimize that growth, and that would be increased wind shear, or what I call the choppiness of the atmosphere. If there's a lot of wind shear in the edge of that eastern basin, you might see the, the growth of that storm start to inhibit just a little bit. So while the, the heat signature is there, there's slightly more favorable conditions tomorrow, a little less today. So I think it's really about the next 24 hours to see what we can expect um, come Wednesday for the state of Florida. And Dr. Trepanier, as we speak, we were just looking at the ocean there on the west coast of Florida. It looked relatively calm, but you were talking about how warm the waters are. How much does climate change contribute to the strength of these storms? That's a great question, and it's complicated, there are so many different variables. I like to think of it as a massive puzzle with all these different pieces. In some years, we can get the puzzle pieces in the right setting to where we see a lot of storms happen. In this particular season, we don't have many of those puzzle pieces, which is why we've seen quite the, the calm season so far. This latest storm or those that will form in the later months here, they have that heat signature available to them, which is not a product of a changing climate, but a product of the warmth of this time of the year. 
Now, some of that impressive heat signature that we see as we go from season to season, that's indicative of our changing oceanic climate and something we should consider. This particular season, we have many things working against hurricane growth, but we do see that impressive heat available. And while partially related to our general warming climate, also just a product of the later timing of our season where we are right now. So Florida Governor Ron DeSantis spoke to the fact that the forecast on the strength of the storm continues to change. Take a listen to what he said. I'd like to get your reaction on the other side. A lot of people thought it would end up being a tropical storm. Then they said, well, maybe a Category 1. Then yesterday it was, oh, maybe it'll hit Cat 2. Uh, now there really doesn't seem anything to prevent it from continuing to strengthen. This is going to be uh, a major impact, and Floridians should expect uh, that this, this storm will be a major Cat 3-plus hurricane. So, Doctor, a couple questions right here. Number one, is it getting harder and harder to predict what storms will do? And number two, is he right? Is he correct to say what he is saying? And what should Floridians be doing right now? So, a few things here. Number one, the idea that we might not have the knowledge of what that storm's going to do for intensity is real. I would not say it's getting harder to predict. I would just say it's still difficult to predict. While we might have a better idea of where a storm will track, intensity is something that we have a little bit less of a handle on, though we know the mechanisms that can make a storm rapidly intensify, and those are present in the eastern part of the Gulf right now, and that's partially related to that massive uh, heat signature. So I do think that Governor DeSantis is right. I think that early on that uncertainty is massive, and so it starts as a tropical storm or a Cat 1. As it gets closer and we start to see it develop, up a little more um, in detail, we can start to see that their signature suggestive of, a, of an intensifying event. So I think he's correct. I think the state of Florida and Florida residents should be very mindful and watching all of their preferred sources right now. I, living in the Gulf Coast, can recognize uh, the importance of having just a general hurricane plan. So certainly you should be or they should be executing that plan right now, making sure that they have their sandbags, as you have pictured there, or making sure that they have adequate supplies of fresh water and so forth. Because I do think that the storm will intensify quickly and then it will make landfall. It never hurts to be too prepared. Dr. Jill Trepanier is an assistant professor and graduate advisor in the Geography and Anthropology Department at Louisiana State University. Doctor, thank you so much for your time today. We'll be right back. This is an important message for the millions of Medicare recipients covered under your state's Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Call the number on your screen and get a free Medicare benefits review to see if you qualify. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Some Medicare Advantage plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, $0 copays for prescription drugs, and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in-network. You don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no-obligation benefits review. Just call 800-981-2945 now. That's 800-981-2945. Plus, certain beneficiaries may qualify based on income verification to enroll in their state-based Medicare savings program. That can add up to $164 back to their Social Security check every month. Call the number on your screen to see if you qualify for this state-based program. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in-network. Plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, $0 copays for prescription drugs, and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, you may be eligible for a plan with free transportation. Remember, you don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no-obligation benefits review. Just call 800-981-2945 now. That's 800-981-2945. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. 
great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-820-9953. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-820-9953. That's 800-820-9953. March 4th, 2024, that is the date when the federal election subversion case against former President Donald Trump is now set to begin. This morning, D.C. District Judge Tanya Chutkin didn't go along with Trump's lawyer's request to move the trial until well after the presidential election. Instead, if this court date holds, then Trump will stand trial on the day before Super Tuesday. National political correspondent Abajoy Burnett joins us now live from Washington with the details on this. All right, Abajoy, let's talk more about the date that the judge has decided to go with in this case and how likely it's going to be that it's going to hold. We have to wait to see, Veronica, if this date actually sticks. But as of now, the January 6th trial against the former president is set for March 4th, 2024. Remember that his team asked for a date in April of 2026. The government, in this case, the prosecutors, they wanted something in January. So they were very far apart. But I want to pull up a full screen here for you to show you a bit of the interaction between John Loro, one of the attorneys for the former president, and the judge. Loro said, never in the history of the United States have we seen a case of this magnitude go to trial in four months. He went on to say this man's liberty and life is at stake, and he was referencing his client here, the former president, Donald Trump. But at the same time, the judge, Tanya Chutkin, she said, you're not going to get two more years. We're not going to trial in 2026. And so she set this trial date for March of next year. We were able to ask a few questions of the attorneys as they walked out earlier today. So there we have it. No response from the attorneys for the former president, Donald Trump. Very different from two weeks ago when they spoke with us as they left. And Abigail, I understand that we've had a, a producer in that courtroom today kind of watching all of this as it unfolded. Um, what more can you tell us about what they saw today in court and what legal experts are saying about this new trial date? Yeah, it was very fiery inside John Loro, even though he didn't say much when he just walked out. He was very um, opin opinionated inside in arguing for his uh, client, the former president. But we spoke with a, a former federal prosecutor about this issue and if it is reasonable to have a trial date on March 4th. And here's what he had to say. It seems that she felt that both sides' proposals were somewhat unreasonable and she was fed up with the parties trying to dictate what the trial date should be. The defense request was much too far out, some two and a half years from now, far after the 2024 election date that they were trying to avoid. And the prosecution's date was perhaps too ambitious, trying to set it in January. And the trial date, it could be pushed off once again. If there is anyone on either side that makes a valid enough argument that convinces the judge that March 4th is too soon. But as of this moment, March 4th, 2024 is the trial date for this January 6th case in which the former president faces four charges. Veronica. All right. National political correspondent Abajoy Burnett live for us there in Washington. Abajoy, thank you. So Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, says most of the actions that led to his indictment were part of his job, and he took the stand this morning in Georgia, hoping to get his trial moved to federal court. A lot of people are watching this closely because Trump and some of the other racketeering defendants are expected to make a similar request. National political correspondent Alex Miller joining me now live from New York. So Alex, take us through what we've seen in court so far today. What's happened? 
Yeah, it's proving to be a long day in court. They just went back after their lunch break, but sounds like the first half of the day was really some explosive information, considering nobody was expecting that Mark Meadows was going to get on the stand himself. He testified that he believed he was acting appropriately, that he felt like he was acting in his professional capacity when he went down there to help. But he described that time period, Veronica, as a very chaotic time. He said he was getting a lot of phone calls, feeling like he had been his phone number had been plastered all over the bathroom for anybody to have access to it. And he did get cross examined. He was asked why he went down to that audit facility in Georgia. He said he went on his own volition, that he was down there visiting uh, family members for Christmas. So there's definitely some back and forth there about whether or not he should have been there. This is all part of his uh, defense of why he believes he should get his case moved to the federal court system because he says he was acting in his federal capacity. Now, DA Fonnie Willis was not there today. She, though, says that if he was acting in his uh, federal uh, professional capacity, that he's violated the, the Hatch Act, which says uh, that you cannot act as a partisan po a member of politics when you have a federal job. So it'll be interesting to see how much longer this lasts. There are a lot of other um, people set to testify, including the Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. What more can you tell us, Alex, about the judge in this case? Because I understand that this motion is being held by a federal judge. Do we know mm -hmm. if this judge is likely to agree to this request? Yeah, this is a federal judge. This is not the judge that's going to be hearing this. His name is Steve Jones. He was reportedly very active uh, in the proceedings today, asking questions, clarifying for Meadows if he didn't answer a question appropriately. Uh, we don't know if he's going to have to or how he's going to rule on this. I will say there was a high bar to get your case moved to federal court. It's not something that happens all the time, but this is likely going to set a precedent for not only the five people who have asked to have their cases moved, but for the other ones that are probably looking on fairly closely. All right, National Political Correspondent Alex Miller, we appreciate it. Thank you. Still ahead on Scripps News Live, a hate crime investigation underway right now after a racist shooting in Florida. What we're learning about the victims, plus Hawaiian Electric taking responsibility for one wildfire, but blaming firefighters for another deadly blaze. While well, the very latest from Maui as hundreds remain missing. That's next. Best thing I've ever done. That's what Freddie told me. A person like me needed to get a reverse mortgage to change my life. It was the best thing I've ever done. And really? Yes, without a doubt. Joanne said just about the same thing. It absolutely is the best thing I ever did. Jack put it a different way. To him, it was about having his grandkids over. You want to have the kids over. You want to have the grandkids yeah. over. You want to have the family over. You want to say, this is my place. Great people. Different people, that's for sure. And all of them had different reasons for getting a reverse mortgage. But you know what? They all felt the same about two things. They all loved their home, and they all wanted to stay in that home. If you're 62 or older and own your home, find out how you could access your home's equity to give you cash now and when you need it in the future. A reverse mortgage could put more money in your pocket by eliminating your monthly mortgage payments. It could also pay off higher interest credit cards, medical costs, and give you some extra cash to help your retirement lifestyle. I don't have any anxiety about money anymore. It allowed me to live in my home and not have to pay payments. A whole lot of families have gotten tax-free cash from a reverse mortgage loan for a better retirement. I don't have to worry about a mortgage payment every month. It's a good thing. Call right now to receive your free no-obligation info kit. The kit will show you how you may get the cash you need using your home's equity as a reverse mortgage from AAG. Call 800-771-8082. Look, why don't you call AAG and find out what a reverse mortgage can mean for you. Call AAG, the country's number one reverse mortgage lender. Call 800-771-8082. That's 800-771-8082.
This stuff yeah. is a miracle. It took us 60 prototypes. Wow. When we made this stuff, it grew into the number one dermatologist recommended sweat brand for all oh, over man. the body. When people say, this is the first thing I've tried that stopped my sweat, that makes my day. We have a sweat quiz that'll customize the products for you based on where you sweat, based on how much you sweat. Free shipping, mm -hmm. money back guarantee. Mm -hmm. There's really no risk to giving it a try. You had a sweaty face or sweaty underarms or sweaty hands. That's really why we made Carpe. Avoid expensive treatments, injections, and prescriptions. Your total body sweat solution is available at mycarpe.com. Sunday nights on In Real Life. So for the baby? Yeah! <laughs> Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. Stunts have become more specialized. And to the heart of the story. When the pandemic hit, the American dream kind of changed. There were a lot of warning signs. They just didn't care. In Real Life, Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Right now, Hawaiian Electric taking responsibility for at least one of the wildfires on Maui, but blamed county firefighters for a second, more destructive fire. The utility is saying its power lines were de-energized for more than six hours before the second fire started. They claim firefighters battled the first fire, contained it, and then left the scene. Maui County sued the company claiming negligence. And starting today, there's a new leader for Maui's Emergency Management Agency. Former Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency Administrator Daryl Oliveira is taking over. Maui's mayor says that Oliveira brings invaluable experience to the position. He takes over for Herman and Daya, who resigned from the role. He cited health reasons as the cause. And his resignation followed criticism over the island's siren system and its silence as the fires began to spread. Now, as work continues to try to locate the hundreds still missing, others are working to bring some relief to those focused on rebuilding their lives. Operation Barbecue Relief spent time on the island whipping up thousands of meals over two weeks, and the group worked with local restaurants to help feed wildfire survivors and first responders. The company's co-founder says they wanted to offer some help as people returned to find their homes reduced to ash. They need everything from finding and living accommodations because that house isn't going to get rebuilt in the next year. And there's not enough contractors around. Um, there's not enough supplies around to even start rebuilding houses. There still hasn't been a video or, or a picture that I've seen um, that truly tells how bad it was. Maui has a long road ahead. Monetary donations are crucial for survivors who are struggling to put their lives back together again. Scripps News is supporting those relief efforts through the Scripps Maui Wildfire Relief Campaign. All you have to do is scan that QR code that you see on the bottom of your screen if you'd like to help. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. And don't forget to check us out online. The address is scriptsnews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live. Coming up, a shortage of cancer drugs not easing as costs begin to add up. What one oncologist is saying about a potential solution. And three people are dead after a racist shooting in Jacksonville, Florida. The response from the White House and the latest on the investigation as next. I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. 
With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. Let's get you up to date on some of our top stories right now. An armed and dangerous person still at large, possibly on campus at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. That lockdown remaining in effect. Police are looking for this person of interest, telling people to stay away and call 911. Moments ago, Governor Roy Cooper pledging to all state resources to protect the campus. Florida now getting ready for tropical storm Idalia. The storm is strengthening as it tracks towards Florida's Gulf Coast. It's expected to hit the state on Wednesday morning, possibly as a Cat 3 hurricane. Evacuations have been ordered for some western counties. President Biden approving an emergency declaration for the state. Governor Ron DeSantis has called the National Guard. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimundo is saying that she had a positive discussion with her Chinese counterpart in Beijing. She's on a visit to China right now and is working to improve communications. The two sides agreeing to holding talks on commercial issues and restrictions on access to advanced technology. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you today. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. We begin this hour with three people dead after a racist shooting at a Jacksonville, Florida Dollar General. It happened in the store on Saturday, and police say the 21 year old gunman left behind racist writings detailing his hatred of black people. He carried weapons with swastikas. Police say the shooter had no criminal arrest history and legally purchased the two firearms used in that shooting. A federal hate crime investigation is now underway, but the sheriff says the suspect's motive is very clear. There's, there's no question about it. He, um, he hated blacks and he, I think he hated just about everyone that wasn't white. Um, he made that very clear. Now we're learning more about the three victims in this attack. Scripps News National Correspondent Maya Rodriguez joins me now from our D.C. newsroom. Maya, thanks so much for your time. Tell us what the latest is in this investigation right now. Well, Veronica, police describe the notes that are left behind by the gunman as, quote, the diary of a madman. Now, as for the family members of those three victims, this whole shooting comes as a shock that they are now struggling to deal with. The shooting unfolded both inside and outside a Dollar General store in Jacksonville, Florida. As investigators say, the gunman used an AR-15 style weapon to open fire. So we're going backwards and we're trying to learn everything that happened. You know, I try to give more and more as, a, as each day passes. We're trying to learn everything that happened that led up to that incident. What is clear, say investigators, is that the shooter targeted black people and left behind evidence of his racism in notes at his home. The store itself is located in a predominantly black neighborhood, and the attack happened shortly after security spotted the shooter at Edward Waters University, a nearby historically black college. There's no question about it. He hated blacks, and he, I think he hated just about everyone that wasn't white. Um, he made that very clear. There have been 475 mass shootings so far this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. This is the third recent shooting to specifically target black people, following shootings at a Buffalo, New York supermarket last year, and another at a historically black church in Charleston, South Carolina in 2015. In the Jacksonville shooting, the victims are 29-year-old Gerald Gallion, a father of a four-year-old who was shot and killed as he entered the front door of the store. 52-year-old Angela Michelle Carr, who was shot in her car outside the store and 19-year-old Anult Joseph Laguerre, known as AJ, 
a store employee who was killed as he tried to flee. On Monday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced the state would be providing funding for added security at Edward Waters University, as well as financial support for the affected families. Now grieving, three lives cut short. Just pray. We got to hold on to these kids. Just pray. Talk to these kids. Teach them that racism is not the way. We need to love each other. It's not the way to go. Now, given the facts in this case, there is a federal investigation now underway. The Department of Justice is looking at this as both a hate crime and, quote, an act of racially motivated violent extremism. Veronica. All right, Maya Rodriguez, we appreciate your time. Thank you. So the White House is also weighing in on the shooting in Jacksonville. White House correspondent Haley Bull joining us now live from Washington. Uh, Haley, what has a reaction been from the White House? What are they saying right now about this racist attack? Veronica, there has certainly been a large focus on this racist shooting in Jacksonville here at the White House today. The White House condemning the shooting and saying that white supremacy has no place and vowing to continue to speak out about this. The White House is, of course, marking the 60th anniversary since the March on Washington today, meeting with civil rights leaders as well as the King family this afternoon. And in that meeting, the president addressing the shooting, saying he never thought he would have to be sitting here uh, discussing some of the things going on in this country and that you wouldn't think a shooting like this would be happening on the 60th anniversary. Listen to a little bit of what he what he just said. The bottom line is uh, a lot's happening around things you wouldn't think would be happening today on the anniversary of the 60 years of the march. I've spoken to the governor and the mayor and black uh, community leaders in Jacksonville, Florida. The sheriff was an African American. I spent a significant amount of time speaking to everyone, including the governor um, of Florida. And as I've said to the country, we can't let hate prevail, and it's on the rise. It's not, not diminishing. Silence, I believe, as we've all said many times, silence is complicity. We're not going to remain silent, and so we have to act against this hate fuel violence. And as you heard the president just say there, he did speak with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis this morning, including about the shooting, uh, vowing to stay committed to helping the people of Jacksonville. Uh, and when he was pressed on how to stamp out uh, hate-fueled violence, uh, the president responded by saying, talking directly to the American people. We do expect the president to give remarks later on this evening, marking that 60th anniversary of the March on Washington as well, Veronica. All right, Haley Bull reporting live from just outside the White House. Haley, we appreciate it. Thank you. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says his chamber may launch an impeachment inquiry of President Biden after lawmakers return from recess. Some House Republicans claim the president is involved in alleged financial misconduct connected to his son Hunter. None of that evidence has surfaced, and even if the House voted for impeachment, it would likely be dead on arrival in the Democratic-controlled Senate. I want to get you now to Ukraine, where three fire. Three fighter pilots died Friday in a tragic midair collision. A year ago, one of them shared the dangerous realities of his job when he sat down with Scripps News correspondent Jason Bellini. An ace fighter jet pilot, a fierce advocate for F-16 jets for his country. We can now, for the most tragic of reasons, show the face and share the real name of the Ukrainian airman we met a year ago who asked us to only identify him by his call sign. Juice, it's, it's my call sign. Juice, Captain Andrei Pilshikov died along with two other Ukrainian Air Force pilots in a two-plane collision on Friday. The tragedy happened, the Air Force says, during a combat mission in a region west of Kyiv. Was the name Juice? President Vladimir Zelensky announcing the tragic news said that Juice helped his country a lot and will never be forgotten. He said results of the investigation into the accident involving two L-39 training jets was ongoing. Ukrainian officials note that were it not for the war, many of their country's aging Soviet-era planes would not be forced to fly. 
In his conversation with us last August, Juice spoke of the extraordinary danger fighter pilots like himself face in their antiquated aircraft. It's very dangerous for us because Russians have the great advantage in technologies and in quantity. They have much better missiles. They could shoot you from much larger distances. Juice told us of missions in which one Ukrainian jet acts as a decoy to attract Russian missiles. It's too dangerous. That sounds like a suicide mission. Almost. Of course, we are maneuvering, so we are just trying to create some tricks against them. A Ukrainian Air Force spokesman said Juice dreamed of F-16s in the Ukrainian sky. That reality is now just over the horizon, with the country now expecting to end up with as many as 120 F-16s and the first of them to be flying missions early next year. Juice said U.S. pilots gave him his call sign during training before the war because he didn't drink alcohol. He spoke excellent English, presumably making him a strong candidate to be among those trained to fly the F-16s. His girlfriend posted a photo of the two of them and his patch under the caption, forever. Following a tradition in the fighter pilot community around the world, Juice's fellow airmen of the 40th Tactical Aviation Brigade wrote Juice's call sign and those of his two fellow pilots who perished on a piano. It was set alight in their honor. Jason Bellini, Scripps News. Eight U.S. Marines are still in the hospital after an aircraft crash left three others dead in Australia. Officials haven't released their conditions, but we do know the first five Marines to arrive at the hospital had critical injuries. The aircraft was carrying 23 Marines when it crashed yesterday morning during a training exercise. Investigators will remain at the crash site for at least 10 days to determine the cause. So the Come On Scripts News Live, it's been over a year now since the 988 helpline launched. Why some calls appear to be going unanswered and the explanation behind it. And we would like to hear from you. Give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline. That number is toll free. It's 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Again, it's 1-833-472-7477. Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. We'll be right back. If you, like many people, are covered by both Medicare and your state's Medicaid, here's something important to know. Now you could get even more health benefits than you already have. It's the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. To find out if you or someone you care about is eligible, it's easy. Call now to talk with us. We can explain it all and answer your questions. Medicaid gives you benefits and Medicare gives you some too. But a dual complete plan can add even more benefits and features compared to original Medicare. You'll have lots of doctors and hospitals to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, including brand names. And depending on where you live, you could enjoy other benefits too, like more dental care and rides to and from your doctor or pharmacy. Most plans even give you up to $300 a month to help pay for covered over-the-counter products groceries, and new this year, utility bills. And best of all, with this plan, there's no extra cost to you. Remember, if you have Medicare and Medicaid, chances are you could get a dual complete plan. So call now to talk with us. Our agents are available to help. We know healthcare can be confusing. United Healthcare can straighten things out. And with over 40 years of experience, you can count on us to be there for you. With a dual complete plan, you could have a wide choice of doctors to choose from, zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, help paying for covered over the counter products, groceries, and utility bills, more dental coverage too, all at no extra cost. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you may be eligible for dual complete. So call the number on your screen now to see if you're eligible or to enroll. There's more for you with the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. When a cyber thief transfers the title of your home out of your name, it's a race against time to stop the theft of your hard-earned equity. Many people don't know this has happened until long after it's done. You as the homeowner think you still own a house. Three months later, you start getting foreclosure notices and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house that you didn't even know existed. So when's the last time you checked on the title to your home? Find out if you're already a victim at HomeTitleLock.com.
How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TryFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TryFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. There's a world of free premium programming right at your fingertips. All you need to do is rescan your television using a digital antenna. Then enjoy a lineup of 24-hour news and entertainment channels. I'm kind of loving this. Visit the freetvproject.org. Welcome back to Script News Live. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. So mortgage rates just hit their highest point since 2000. While all rates are high right now, buyers with better credit scores are saving a lot. Joe Ducey with Scripps News Phoenix shares the three most important ways that you can raise your credit score. Using MyFICO.com's calculator, on this day, a 30-year fixed $400,000 mortgage with a credit score of 620 to 639 will get you an 8.9% interest rate. But raise that score just 40 points, and at 7.9%, that rate saves you more than $100,000 over the life of the loan. Same thing with a car. Looking at a four-year $25,000 loan, a 630 credit score gets you a 15.4% interest rate. Raise that score 40 points. You're looking at 6.7%, saving you more than $100 a month. That's $5,000 you'd save on that car. So you know the impact of having a better credit score. How do you make that happen? Well, the three biggest factors in making that score are payment history, amounts owed, and account history. Payment history is most important, 35% of the credit score. 30 days late can take up to 100 points off your score. If you're late, contact your creditor. If it's rare, NerdWallet says you could send a goodwill letter explaining a mistake and asking it not to be reported. If your non-payment is more serious, try working out a payment plan. Amounts owed makes up 30% of your score. Try using less than 25% of your credit limit with every account. The less used, the better. Choose smaller balances on several accounts instead of a large balance on one. And consider asking for higher credit limits. And 15% of that score comes from your account histories. Older accounts help you here. Accounts with a longer history of on-time payments. So if you're closing accounts, consider keeping older accounts open even if you're not using them consistently. Now, if you can't get a typical credit card, a secured credit card does help build credit by putting down a cash deposit and then charging against that. Also, check your credit report for any errors and then correct them. And that was Joe Ducey there reporting for us from Phoenix, Arizona. Now to Missouri, where a ban on gender-affirming health care for minors has gone into effect. Families of transgender youth sued to overturn the law, asking the judge to temporarily block it. But the judge ruled on Friday it could take effect today, as previously scheduled. And the law means minors in the state will no longer be able to receive gender-affirming surgeries. Transgender children who are already prescribed puberty blockers can continue their treatment but other children will not have access. Another hearing on the law is set for September 22nd. In the meantime, in Texas, a judge blocked an upcoming ban on gender-affirming care for minors. Families and doctors sued to block the law, saying it would violate parents' rights and have devastating consequences for trans children. The ban was expected to start on September 1st. The Texas Attorney General has filed an appeal, and so far, at least 22 states have enacted bans or restrictions on gender-affirming care for minors. The FDA is warning people to throw out certain eye drops. Dr. Bernie's MSM drops 5% solution. Also, Light Eye's MSM eye drops. They're both being recalled right now. The drops might contain possible bacterial contamination, fungal contamination, or both. The agency is saying that people who use the drops could develop an infection that threatens their vision and it could become life-threatening. Hundreds of thousands of cancer patients are struggling to get treatment as life-saving drugs become harder and harder to find. More than a dozen cancer drugs have been in limited supply since June, impacting around one in three hospitals. One of the most common cancer drugs usually goes for about 29 bucks, but now has a price tag of over $300. And the cost is mostly falling on hospitals. It's a problem that one pediatric oncologist says needs a complex solution. Most of these cancer drugs do not have great alternatives. You can't just be like, oh, you know, it's not like a banana. I won't have a banana today. I'll have an apple. It's still fruit. It doesn't really work that way. They're very, we're very limited in the amount of creativity that we can use yeah. to swap out drugs. The FDA is allowing imports of cancer drugs from China to combat the shortage. And back in July, the agency approved 10 lots of cisplatin to be distributed in the U.S. 
So CTE may be more prevalent than previously believed. Boston University took a look at 152 brains donated by athletes who died under the age of 30. CTE is often associated with multiple concussions. Over one third had developed early signs of the disease. Boston University says most of the donations were from youth, high school or college athletes. The youngest, a 17 year old football player. It's been more than a year now since the National Mental Health Crisis Helpline 988 was established. But a recent investigation from the Kaiser Family Foundation shows that many of those calls can go unanswered. In fact, in Arizona, 11% of them do. Ford Hatchet from Scripps News Phoenix looked into why. This is the automated message all 988 callers must navigate through any time they dial in. But if you hang up during this portion of the call, it counts as an unanswered call even though the phone never even rang in the call center. There are times that individuals choose to hang up uh, before uh, they have a chance to get to a, um, an agent. We average pick up the phone within nine seconds uh, of that phone starting to ring. In Arizona, when someone calls 988, it's most often handled by the Solari Crisis and Human Services Office. The operators here have a 98% answer rate when the phone actually rings. 911s don't even have the same answer rates as we do. But those struggling with mental health sometimes hang up before receiving the help. I used to call and then be like, no, my issue is not important enough and just hang up and deal with it myself. And, you know, that's their job. They're there to talk to you and your issue is just as important as anybody else's. The state's 988 line is averaging more than 6,000 calls a month. Dispatch, that's Michelle. Up 40% from last year. But the state's long-standing 10-digit number, also handled by Solari, is still fielding more than 35,000 calls a month. That differs from 988 because it's a live answered 100% of the time. So as soon as you dial that phone number, again within nine seconds, we're going to have somebody on the other end ready to talk to you. Help is only a text away. People can also send a text or online chat to get help and even can call in looking to help a friend or family member in crisis, expanding the opportunities to inspire hope. There's no shame at all in calling 988. There's no shame in asking for help. It's super brave, super courageous. 85 to 90% of the calls that come in, we're able to stabilize right on the phone. The trained behavioral health staff is available 24 seven to take calls or texts in Spanish or English. And that was Ford Hatchet reporting for us from our Phoenix station. Now, nationwide, Kaiser found that the helpline state average answer rates varied from 55% to 98% and also depended on factors like investment in the service. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a high school fo football team getting a little more disciplined on and off the field. We're going to take a closer look at how getting dressed up has been helping to change their mindset and make school a more positive place to be. And we would love to hear from you. Follow us on Scripps News. Send us a tweet or actually send us an X on the platform formerly known as Twitter. Also, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and on Threads. We'll be right back. This is an important message for the millions of Medicare recipients covered under your state's Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Call the number on your screen and get a free Medicare benefits review to see if you qualify. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Some Medicare Advantage plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage. Zero dollar copays for prescription drugs and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in network. You don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no obligation benefits review. Just call 800 981 2945 now. That's 800 981 2945. Plus, certain beneficiaries may qualify based on income verification to enroll in their state-based Medicare savings program. That can add up to $164 back to their Social Security check every month. Call the number on your screen to see if you qualify for this state-based program. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to take your call. Just call 800-981-2945 now. Medicare and Medicaid give you some benefits, but there are Medicare Advantage plans available with even more benefits and savings. Plus, some plans may include lots of doctors and hospitals all in network. Plans may include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, $0 copays for prescription drugs, 
and an annual allowance to spend on groceries, rent, and utilities for those who qualify. Plus, you may be eligible for a plan with free transportation. Remember, you don't get these benefits automatically. Call now and get a free, no-obligation benefits review. Just call 800-981-2945 now. That's 800-981-2945. The Athletic. Subscribe today. Hi, I'm Sophia, founder of Pair Eyewear. The only glasses you can change, like you change your clothes. Each pair starts with the base frame, then choose from over hundreds of designs, like a top frame from your favorite holiday, or you can even turn your glasses into sunglasses. Every pair starts at just $60, including prescription lenses. Glasses are an extension of your personality, and we're here to celebrate each and every version of you. Discover your next pair at PairEyewear.com. You're watching Scripps News. Streaming everywhere, totally free. Want to see more? Grab the app on your favorite streaming platform or go to ScriptsNews.com to find every way to watch. Go to ScriptsNews.com now to find out more. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Oh, check this out. Simone Biles there further cementing her legacy as the greatest gymnast of all time. Biles won a record eight national all-around title at the U.S. Gymnastics Championship Sunday. She's also the oldest woman to ever win the championship at 26 years old. Files returned to the competition earlier this month, winning the Core Hydration Gymnastics Classic, but she hasn't publicly committed to competing in next year's Paris Olympics. Wow, nicely done. Very good. A Florida high school football team has a new motto, look good, play good. The Spanish River Sharks coach says it's meant to help bring discipline to the team and instill a positive school culture. Stephanie Suskin from Scripps News West Palm Beach explains. They're the big men on campus, now attracting new attention in shark territory. Look good, you play good. Look good, play good. Senior Enrico Stevens takes it seriously, down to his toes. When we found out we was going to dress up every Wednesday, I decided to put them on. I mean, I feel a lot more confident, and I just feel like I'm a lot more professional, and my teachers view me that way, too. Dressing up every week is just one way second-year head coach Ian Headley is instilling a new sense of discipline. He says his players need it. Them starting practice before the coaches get out there, just all, you know, all little things like that, making sure that we're keeping the campus clean, we're saying the right things, we're doing the right things. The team eats lunch together, has study hall together, these little things all working to create a more cohesive school of sharks. Compared to last season, I feel like we came together more as a team and we are a lot more confident this year. It feels different when you're when you have a whole collective that all wants one thing and it's like a family. Coach Headley says that renewed sense of unity didn't come without hard work on the gridiron. You know, we started our workouts at 5:30 in the morning and it was super super intense. Our summer training was super intense, so you know, we were the only people here, so we we could only just lean on each other and and depend on each other. So I think that's where that came from. So as these Sharks look to take a bite out of the competition this season. I come to school, you know, everyone's like, why are y'all dressed up? But like, we trying to get the districts. We are going to get the districts. We're going to win. They know there's a whole team swimming beside them. Knowing that I left it all out on the field with a group of people that cared about me. So while the guys do their dress up days on Wednesdays, don't worry, on game days they are decked out in their jerseys. In Boca Raton, I'm Stephanie Suskind. Back to you. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget the news continues right here on Scripps News Live. Del Walters is up next. After a quick break, we're tracking Tropical Storm Idalia, where it is right now and how people in Florida are bracing for the storm surge. Don't forget to check us out on ScriptsNews.com online as well. Now, if you are staying with us, like I just said, we have much more news headed your way. You're watching Scripps News Live.